We are about to go into the third and the final session. If we can please begin to come in and let's just begin to settle down. If we can begin to settle down, we are coming to the last session. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be starting the next session now. Just a few reminders, please. If you can remember to make sure that you keep your belongings with you at all times, please help us to keep all the aisles clear for health and safety reasons. I also wanted to let you know that if you've gotten your merch, that's great. If you haven't, if you still want to get something, um, please do so as soon as possible. The food table and the merchandise table will close in one hour's time. So if you still need to get something, please do that now. Amen. So we're going to start now with a time of worship. do something different this evening because the Bible says that as we ministered to God that the Holy Spirit began to speak and I believe that the Holy Spirit is about to speak to a lot of us this evening even as Apostle Ryan comes and gives the word and does impartation but I want you to do something for me so quickly I want you to get a pen and paper I want you to get a pen and paper and I need you to do this so quickly, 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 quickly. And I want you to write down that very prophecy that you believe that God has been tugging on your heart. We are believing that in 2023, it is gonna come to pass. Come on, we are believing that in 2023, it is about to come to what? And so I want you to write it down if you are able to rip it out of your papers, of, of your books, that would be great because I want you to come and lay it on the altar. We're going to worship and minister unto God this evening. So I need you to do this quickly, 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 quickly. If you have a pen and paper, I want you to begin to write down. I want you to write it down. God, in 2023, I shall see this come to pass. I shall see this come to pass. I shall see this come to pass. Come on, I haven't got much time. And when you have written it, will you do me a favor? Will you come and lay it on the altar? We're going to worship over this word this evening. We're going to minister unto God, and God is going to speak over everything we have written on this paper. Can you do that quickly for me? Mako toraya bakitia. And as we begin to do that, can we raise our heavenly language in the room? As you're writing over it, I want you to begin to pray. There's a level of faith that's about to rise in this room. I kanda da re ba kete ya mama ndo ya mane e kaya baba ba zoko to ya mama re makata ya baba kete ya mama mama nde ya e kaya mazuku tu ya mane re ba zoko to ya mama nde e kaya makoto ya mama mama re bakata ya baba baba 
Come on, some God is about to meet you in your place of need. Come on, I'm going to give you one more minute. I'm going to give you one more minute. I want to give you one more minute. I want to give you one more minute. I want you to write it down on that piece of paper. And I want you to come and lay it at the altar. Among the gods who is like thee, glorious and holy and fearful, always blue, wing wonders, hallelujah.
We speak healing. Come on, shout it out. Send revival. Send revival. Say, we speak salvation. Say, And we speak deliverance. And we speak healing. Send revival. One more time, just the voices. Say. Let me hear. We speak sound. Say. We. And we. We speak healing. Send revival. Send revival. Send revival. We speak salvation. 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 God. Hey. Hey. We speak healing. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. From the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus.
from the mountain say shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus in the street Jesus in the street Jesus in the darkness Jesus in the over darkness every enemy. over every enemy Jesus for my family Jesus for my family I speak the Holy I speak the Holy Name somebody cry his name Jesus. come on shout it out shout his name shout his name shout Jesus from the Jesus for my family. Jesus for my family. Come on, I, I speak. Speak the holy name. Speak the holy name. Come on, somebody in this room, lift your voice and say, Shout Jesus from the mountain. Say, Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the street. Hey! Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Hey, Jesus for my family. Everything that has contended for your family. Rebecca, I am a 
Everything that's contended for your mind. Everything that's contended for your ministry. We speak the blood. We speak the blood. We speak the blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Jesus. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everything that's contended for your prophecies. Everything that's contended over your dreams. Everything that does not look like God.
just wants us to be kids again. I love For they are weak, but
We're going to take the next few minutes. We're going to pray for the church. Who agrees with me that the church needs prayer? Especially the church in the UK. You see, the agenda of the church, rather, the agenda of hell against the church is to relegate us to the dustbin of history. The enemy wants the church to be redundant in this nation, the UK. Listen, let me share some statistics with you. You see, in, in, on the 28th of June, 2021, you see, it's important that when we pray, we pray with understanding. Amen. On the 28th of June, 2021, the UK released what they call the UK Census 2021, which speaks about data regarding the UK population. What is actually happening in the UK? Please, can I get my slides on so that we can all see it together? Because I want to share some statistics with you so that you yourself can see and you can understand why we need to pray for the church. Amen. Amen. You see, the fastest declining faith in the UK is Christianity. If you don't know, Get to know. Let me read this for you. You see, the fastest rising religion uh, in the UK is what they call shamanism. Shamanism. It's a demonic cult. Listen, they access the dead. They are able to journey with people to the dead. Can you imagine? They access supernatural power just so they can heal people and they can perform all kind of mysteries. Listen, they are demonic. That's the first one. Secondly, pagan slash wicked, rather, witchcraft has increased from 57,000 to 74,000 people in the UK. That's an increase of 30% from 2011 up until 2020. Are you with me? Say amen. Thirdly, the Muslim population has grown from 2.7 million people in 2011 to 3.9 million people in 2021. That's, a, that's, a, that's an increase of 44%. Even Buddhism saw a modest increase of 0.1% from 249,000 people to 273. But look at the scariest part. People that identify as Christians has declined by 13.1% from 59.3% to a modest 46.2%. The devil is a liar! My God, my God, my God. As, as you can see, over the past 10 years, the enemy has been strategic. The enemy has been trying and to ensure that the church goes from down toward, downward and down. But the devil is a liar. We're going to pray together right now in unity. Let's hold the person on your right and the person on your left. We're going to pray for revival. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 85 verse 6, Will you not revive us now so that your people can rejoice in you. Listen, we're going to travel in the spirit. We're going to agonize. We're going to agonize. We're going to agonize. We're going to pray for the 
church. Let's begin to pray now. In the name of Jesus, let's take back control. Let's take back control. Let's take back control. Let's take back control. We have to travel in the spirit. Prophesy if you have to. Let's come against every agenda of hell. Every agenda of hell over the church in the UK. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we decree so mightily through the word of God that it prevails in this nation. Let's decree Jesus is Lord over the UK. In the name of Jesus, Jesus is Lord over the UK. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to decree after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every demonic agenda warring against the church in the UK, catch fire! Let's turn into prayer. Every demonic agenda over this nation. To stifle the church. To destroy the church. To destroy the credibility of the church. We take back control. 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 We decree uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, we decree uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, we decree uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, revival. Revival. We cry, Lord. Uh, revival. We cry, Lord. Uh, revival. In our nations. Uh, revival. Uh, in our homes. Uh, revival. Uh, in our church. Uh, revival. Uh, in our jobs. Uh, revival. Uh, in our businesses. Uh, revival. Uh, that the church will arise. Uh, that the church will arise. Uh, that the church will arise. Uh, we will arise. Uh, we will arise, we will arise, we will arise uh, in unity. Ah, uh, my shakata, ah, uh, baba baba shakoto. You said uh, during the time of Babu, uh, you said these people uh, are united, uh, and anything they put their minds to, uh, it will not be impossible for them, Lord. Uh, in unity, oh God, uh, we surrender, we ask, oh God, uh, revive us now, uh, revive us now uh, as a church, Lord, uh, as a nation, Lord, uh, revive us, oh God, uh, revive us, oh God. Uh, Pray for the church. Intercede for the church. As you intercede for the church, you intercede for yourself. For your family. Revive us now. Revive us now. That the fire of revival, Lord, who blaze in this nation, 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 who blaze in this nation. Let's war, let's war for the church. Let's war for the church. The church is growing. In Jesus' name, 
in Jesus' name. Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of the hell, the gates of hell will not prevail over the church. Hell, my shakata. Gates speaks of authority and power. We're going to decree every authority, every power, every principality standing against the proliferation of the gospel in the UK. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Let's turn it into prayer. Father, we decree in the name of Jesus every power of hell, every power of hell, every authority of hell standing up against the gospel, against the proclamation of the gospel in the UK. Catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. Our power is like the sun that shines brighter and brighter to the great dawn of day. In the name of Jesus, the gospel is preached like never before. The sala mashekoto, asana la mashekata, ela baba baba shekata, ara baba shekoto. Revive us, Lord. 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 You're not praying enough, though. You're not praying enough, though. Eh shekata kasakata, eh la baba baba shekata, eh la baba baba shekata. Even in the schools, the curriculums is working against the church. You have to pray. Listen, you have to pray. Masakata shekoto, eh shekata, masete ya baba baba shekoto. Ah, they want to indoctrinate our children with the stupid agenda. The devil is a liar. Now begin to prophesy over this nation. Prophesy over the church. Open your mouth up and prophesy over this church. I prophesy over this nation. The word of the Lord is growing from strength to strength. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over this nation. The mighty word of God prevails. It prevails. It prevails in our schools. It prevails in our companies. It prevails in the society. It prevails in our communities. It prevails in the name of Jesus. The church will not be silenced. In the name of Jesus, agenda, godly agenda is pervading the government in the name of Jesus. Final prayer point. Final prayer point in Jesus' name. Final prayer point. You see, one of the key reasons why the agenda of hell continues to win in the government is because believers are not stepping up and taking the post in these key positions. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Begin to raise the Josephs, raise the Elijahs, raise the apostles, raise the prophets, raise the evangelists in key positions in the marketplace. Let's turn it into prayer. Pray! Pray! Pray, pray, my shele bosse, my sakata, ella baba baba shekoto, riba baba baba shekata, my koro bosse, ella baba baba shekata. Say, Lord, raise me, Lord, use me, Lord, I'm ready, Lord, use me, use me. We have to change the narrative against the church. We have to change the agenda against the church. We stand against the gates of hell. We say, enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, Ella Mashakata, Ella Baba 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 Shekoto, Ella Baba 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 Shekata, Maroba Baba, Ella Baba 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 Shekoto, Ella Mashakoto, Ella Baba Baba Baba, Ella Baba Shekoto, Mashakata, Ella Baba Baba Shekata, Ella Baba Baba Shende, Matakata Kasakata, Ella Baba Baba Shekata, Ah, Lemo Shena Baba, Ella Baba Sekoto, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray
Amen. Before we go on to the next session, I just want to let you know that a wallet has been found. If you've lost your wallet, please have a look. If you've lost your wallet, if this is yours, please come and see me. So, we will be going on to the next section um, now. I do want to say when we close, can we please make sure that we leave the building quietly because of our neighbors. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so now I'm just going to invite my apostle, the senior leader of the Brook Place, the convener of the convocation, the president of PMP. I'm going to invite him now. Let's give it up for Apostle Oscar, Apostle Dr. Oscar, as he comes up. Come on and give it up for the man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good, God. Are you excited already? Yeah. Promise you I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to dance. Because I've got my father in the house. But before I bring up my father on stage, you know, this afternoon, I, or this morning, I thanked my wife. And I said she was the butter in my gigi bread. I said that she was the super malt in my fridge. I call her my pina colada. I thank the Lord for my wife because she is um, instrumental to where I've been and where, what I've become. But... I want to thank a special woman in my life. The one who carried me for nine months. My own mother! <laughs> my own mother! You see... There were so many things I can talk about today. I remember back in the day, while growing up, this woman would make sure that nothing distracts me from God. And what you see today is a product of a consistent intercession. Mama. All right, are you ready for the word? Set your number, say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Say, get ready, get ready, get ready. So, you know, Apostle couldn't make it to flames. And I said to Apostle, sir, because you didn't come for flames, you're going to come for convocation. And he said, son, I'm in. Hey, hey, listen, I don't know about you today. I am ready for my impartation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you do me the honor? Rise up on your feet. Now, this is the honor you want to give me today. Thank you so much for honoring me, but today is my father in the building. The one from whom I drink from. Would you jam those hands together? We need the musicians to play. Would you jam those hands together? As we make welcome to the microphone, Apostle Ryan. gentlemen. Now that's not me. Ladies and gentlemen, would you do me this honor as we make welcome to the microphone, Apostle Ryan. Jump those hands. Oh, give the Lord a shout while you're standing. Come on. Can we just give him about a 30-second praise right now? The devil hates it when you praise God. Come on, someone shout unto God with a voice of triumph right now. 
Those in the building, those online, begin to lift your voice and shout now. Shout like the breakthrough's yours. Shout like the miracle's yours. Shout like the victory's yours. Come on, praise fills the avenger. Give God a shout tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Come on, if he's been good to you, give him praise now. Oh, we love you, Lord. The devil trying to take our mind, but we're still here. The devil trying to mess up with our body, but we're still here. The devil trying to assault our family, but we're still here. The Bible said, let everything, let everything, let everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you better get ready to shout tonight. Neighbor, tonight is your night for your miracle. Come on, shake your finger and say, I don't care what the devil's been doing. I don't care what the devil's been saying. This is the time for you to go to the next level in the name of Jesus. If you agree, shout amen. Oh, yes. I'll tell you, it's, it's preaching time tonight at convocation. Find three people and greet them in the building. For those that are on the live stream, we bless you. We welcome you. We're excited that you are here tonight. God is good. How many of you have been blessed during the convocation? I said, how many have been blessed during the convocation? How many received instruction, impartation, insight, revelation? If you're a five-fold ministry gift, wave at me. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We welcome you. If you lead a, a church, a local church, wave at me. Apostles, pastors, we bless you. It's so good to see you from uh, here in the UK and beyond. It's good to see my tribe network members that are in the house. I appreciate you. I love you. Apostle Davidson's doing a great work. Uh, God has expanded his territory into Ireland, and we praise God for that. Amen. Uh, all the way from Germany, Pastor Christian and Bianca, just stand up. They've got a wonderful church in Germany, long-time faithful workers in the Lord, and I just had the privilege of ordaining them. Uh, they've been many years in ministry. They served uh, coordinating meetings for Reinhard Bonnke or his operation in their nation, but we just ordained them to help them go their next leg of the journey, and I'm glad that you're here, and I want to see you after service tonight. Amen. God bless you, and traveling with me is Prophet Kelton, who does a great job of taking care of me on the road. My wife is my favorite traveling companion, but when she's not available, he does a great job. I do tell her when she travels with me, though, babe, you know, I'm used to having an armor bear. So uh, someone carrying my bag and doing that, and she said, you're not going to get that from me, babe. So it's all right. And, of course, Dr. Oscar Gabadia, my son, give the Lord a hand of appreciation for him, whom I love very much. And... His better half, Pastor Triumph Gabadia. Will you give the Lord a praise for her? All right, you can be seated. We're going to the Word shortly. Stay with me, musicians, because I'll need you in a few moments. Before we get into the Word, I want to do something special. The Bible tells us that there were certain uh, elders that were praying and fasting, apostles, teachers. And they began to sense God commissioning Paul and Barnabas unto the work. I was enlightened by the panel this afternoon, although I think I counted every one of you failed miserably to summarize your thoughts into 10 words at the close. Save you one great minister, Apostle Juanita here on the front row. She was got it done in five words. The rest of you were far over your words. But one of the questions was, how do I know if I'm called to be a whatever? And I found that when God calls you to something, there will be a miraculous thing called confirmation. God will confirm your call, but with significant force behind it. 
And tonight, before I open the text, I want to confirm the call of pastor on the life of a very special person. Sit somewhere I can see you. Get somewhere where I can see you, wherever they'll let you be. I, I want to ordain as a pastor, because she's fulfilling this already very well, Pastor Triumph Gabadia. Amen. <laughs> Tonight we want to bless you. We want to affirm the mandate upon your life as you're. And I hear the Lord say, daughter, you're not just standing beside this man, but you're standing within an office I've created you for before the foundation of the earth. For the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm strengthening you in this season. For this is going to be a season of running like no other season. The Lord said, I'm going to cause strength to be upon you in innumerable, incomparable ways. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm going to cause you to speak with strength. I'm going to cause you to pray with strength. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm going to even cause you to see with strength. For the Lord said, your sight is elevating on to another level. And the Spirit of the Lord said, those times and in, in seasons as though it felt as though you were passed by. The Spirit of the Lord said it wasn't being passed by. It was being covered and hidden for such a time as this. But the Lord said, I'm going to reveal through you the gift of compassion. Where there are people that will not be healed by a word of knowledge. They will not be healed by the laying on of hands. But they will be healed by the loins of compassion. And the Spirit of the Lord said, I placed a measure and level of compassion in you that my people need. And the Spirit of the Lord said, I'm going to cause divine thrust to be upon you. I see you gathered women by the thousands. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you a mandate for women. The Lord said, I'm going to cause women to be drawn to you from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. The Lord said, I'm going to cause you to be an instrument of healing for women that feel like they can't make it another day. For women that feel like they're called but they don't know where to go. I'm going to cause you to be the one that pushes them forth, said the Lord. Because I am thrusting you forth in this season. And do not say, but Lord, I don't know what to say. The Lord said, I will fill your mouth when it is the appointed time for you to speak. I will fill your mouth when it's time for you to pray. I will fill your mouth when it's time for you to testify. I will fill your mouth when it's time for you to teach. Because yes, from before the foundation of the earth, I called and chose you for this work, said the Lord. And tonight we as a company of international fivefold gifts and believers affirm this call upon your life. So it is with great honor that on behalf of the Brook Place, on behalf of my ministerial council and leadership and all those attached to me and the ordinances of this house, the Brook Place, we ordain you as a pastor to shepherd and care for the people. We release the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you that you will move with fresh anointing and grace You'll move with fresh authority and faith in the name of Jesus. And all the people of God said, amen. I've come to know in my life is that I can never say no to God. If God says yes, all I can say is yes, I'm ready. I'm merely a vessel, but God is coming for me this 2023. And as he's coming for me, I'm coming for you. So I've been privileged to be brought up in church, privileged to be married to an amazing man of God. God always knew before the beginning of time before I came on this earth, the purpose that he had for me, I believe so. So this is not by mere coincidence. I know this, Apostle, even though I'm very surprised. My husband kept that very quiet. As you can see, the shock in my face. But I know that God is going to use me. And I promise you that I will only preach truth. And my life will only be an example of truth. I will not be a person that is different from the inside out. 
What you see is what you get. And I promise you that my words will not be diluted, but only according to the biblical context of what Jesus says through me. So there ain't no false pastor here. It's a true one. And if I don't have a word, I don't have a word. But if I have a word, I have a word for you. And trust me and believe it's from God. God bless you. I'm here to serve. And God, I say yes. Thank you. Oh, give the Lord a praise for that. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. It's good to celebrate the people of God. Amen. While you're standing, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for what you've done this day. Now, Lord, those gathered in this place and those online, we come to you surrendered. Holy Spirit, this is not my gathering. It's not even the convener's gathering. It's yours. Fill every second that I have before these, your people, with your anointing. Heal, deliver, compel, impart, set free, Lord. We submit and we surrender to your wonder and your glory tonight. In the matchless name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. If you have a Bible, I want to go to the book of Corinthians. Let me check this text and make sure that I'm telling you correctly. I believe I want to go to 1 Corinthians, but I want to make sure. How many of you love the Word? Amen. We love the Word of God. Let me just find it and make sure I'm in the right place tonight. 1 Corinthians, I believe we want to go to chapter 2. Yes, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read from the NASB. I'm speaking tonight on the subject of the Ox Eagle Reformers. I believe that God is raising up a breed of people that are unusual. We're talking about unusual, unprecedented, unparalleled times, but they will be met with unusual, unprecedented, unparalleled anointing, unusual, unprecedented, unparalleled prophetic revelation, unusual, unprecedented, unparalleled apostolic muscularity and stamina. So we're going to talk tonight about the ox eagle reformers. If you like the status quo, this is not the service for you. If you like the spirit of religion, this is not the service for you. If you've come to make hell nervous and please God, then I'm talking to you tonight. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 1. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing of, uh, uh, um, I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3. I was with you in a weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men but upon the power of God Paul was preaching in the midst of a people he understood there was two extremes happening in that time the Jews wanted a sign they craved the mysticism uh, that they wanted the mystery and the sign, uh, but the, the Gentiles, or the Greeks rather, they loved philosophical dialogue. They wanted you to speak in a way that sounded deep. Come on, somebody. They wanted you to speak in a philosophical manner. They were not pleased for the simple preaching of the gospel, but Paul had the ability to do something no philosopher could do. Paul had the ability to cause lame legs to walk in the name of Jesus. He had the ability to cause dumb tongues to be loose in the name of Jesus. He had the ability to cause blind eyes to see in the name of Jesus. And so Paul was standing counter-cultural, saying unto those of you that are obsessed with a Greek mentality, I'm not coming with philosophy. I'm not coming with another lesson that's going to educate you, but I'm coming with another dimension. You see, many of us have heard things that educated us, but it did not shift us dimensionally. And I believe these ox-eagle reformers that are 
are rising. They will be those that shift people dimensionally. After you've been in their presence, not only are you not the same, you're not standing the same. You're not thinking the same. You're not seeing the same. After these ox eagle reformers have ministered to you, your eyes that did not see are seen. Your ears that did not hear are hearing. Why? Because you were brought into another dimension. I would submit to you that I believe we are living in a time as was the case with the Apostle Paul. We have one extreme in the body of Christ that seeks a sign. It's no longer good enough to heal the sick, to raise the dead. People want diamonds to appear from the sky. They want mystical footprints in their carpet. They want a Holy Ghost feather to land in their hair. I'm not saying that God is not able to do those things. He surpasses time and matter. God is able. The same God that puts a kidney where there's no kidney. The same God that puts an eardrum where there is no eardrum. The same God that puts a foot where there was no foot is the same God that put gold, could put a gold bar in your home. The same God that could put a footprint in your carpet. I'm not saying that that realm is not real. I've seen unusual, unexplainable things happen. I remember being in my time of prayer when the Lord said there is an angel that is going to begin to work with you in your ministry and it is sent to you specifically for the mandate of healing and I said Lord how will I know when this angel shows up he said when this angel first arrives the lights will begin to flicker as you are ministering I was preaching during a tour of ministry in the nation of Australia and it was a dry meeting there was no energy there was no exuberance there was no excitement but all of a sudden the light started to flicker and I told the people what the Lord had said to me not one adult moved out of their seat but a little girl some 11 or 12 years old ran down to the front and said pastor I'm, I, I don't remember if she was I think she was blind legally had big thick glasses she said I can't see but I believe that angel is here will you pray I said I'll pray let me be clear I'm not the healer the angel's not the healer Jesus is the healer we are servants of the most high God but we will pray. Watch this. And we began to pray. And the little girl took her glasses off and said, I can see. I can see. I can see. So I've seen unusual things happen. I've seen oil come out of people's hands where there was no oil. I've seen God do strange things, unusual things. But I'm saying to you, I believe we're living in a day of extremes where now it's not good enough to just get an impartation. But there's a group of Christians that they want a mystical experience. And Paul was dealing with such a group. And then we've got a group of Greek-minded Christians. We're seeing this in the Western world. We know four steps of intercession, but we don't know how to intercede. We know seven prophetic activations, but we don't have a word that keeps us pure. We, we go eight different ways to get our miracle, but nobody's getting their miracle. We become so educated and so deep in the spirit, yet we are not moving in the spirit. And Paul said, I'm standing against this culture. I'm not going to give you philosophy. I'm not going to give you the wisdom of man. I'm going to bring you to another dimension. What I've come to ask you, oxen, eagle, reformers, is are you representing another dimension? When you show up, does the miracle realm show up? When you show up, does the word of knowledge show up? When you show up, does the unseen realm show up? Because I believe that the mandate is that you would bring another dimension to the people and you would bring people into another dimension he was standing against the culture you cannot be apostolic if you're not willing to stand against the culture you cannot be apostolic if you're not willing to say hard things you cannot be prophetic and everybody likes you I'm nervous when everybody likes certain prophets when all their words are pleasant, when all their words are good, it makes me afraid, Juanita, because I think, you know, I need somebody that will say, Ryan, if you go down that pathway, God's not with you. God's not on that. With the God, we had some preaching prophets that would lift their voice like a trumpet and warn the people of God, yes, I want you to get your car. Yes, I want you to get your money. Yes, I want you to get your upgrade. But I still want you to live holy. I still want you to live right. I still want you to fast. I still want you to 
pray. Come on. We need some prophets that know how to stand for truth in this hour. You've got to be willing to stand against culture. And I'm not just talking about out there. I'm talking about in here. You've got to be willing to speak up. There are things happening in the church that are not right, that God is not pleased with. And we can't be seeking philosophical answers with no power. The earth is groaning, travailing, shaking, looking for a manifestation, not of a preacher, not of a fivefold gift, but a manifestation of the sons of God. The earth is looking for those that have been with God. What was it about people like John G. Lake that they could put the plague in his hands and it would die? What was it about men like William Seymour that he had a Pentecostal experience when people did not even understand Pentecost? They had been with God and these ox eagle reformers that God is raising up will be those that have been with God this is the problem we've been in the classes we've been in the studies we've been in the Greek we've been in the Hebrew we've been in the mysticism but we've not been with God and we need some people that have been with God these reformers won't go with the status quo I believe there's a generation of ox eagle reformers arising that are going to build dynamic hubs, apostolic centers, great churches, exciting movements that carry the power and the glory of God in the earth. And I believe these anointings, the apostolic and the prophetic, have been intrinsically linked together. Why? Because they both are those who steward mysteries. The Bible said... That the apostles steward mysteries. Paul said we are stewards of the mysteries of God in 1 Corinthians 4.1. Let a man account of us as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. We know that prophets unveil and unfold mysteries. We know that prophets can give us a word about our future. Why? Because God stands in the past, the present, and the future all simultaneously. That's why when a prophet steps out of this dimension into another dimension, they call for what was already sealed in your life from before the foundation of the earth. Why do apostles and prophets run so easily together? Because we are both stewards of the mysteries of God. Perhaps the greatest mystery that we steward is the matchless love of Jesus. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now let me just pause and say this. You cannot be a New Testament prophet with an Old Testament revelation. See, if you build your prophetic paradigm on Elijah, on Samuel, on Elisha, exclusively, you will miss the greatest call of a prophet. The Bible says in Revelation, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. This means that what we steward prophetically is the mystery of Christ. That while we were still sinners, Christ loved us. That at our lowest point, Christ loved us. This means that we've got to prophetically have the ability to discern a demon, but still love the person with the demon. Why? Because God has called us to be a link between this realm and that realm and bring them out. So don't ask God to be prophetic. If you won't go through some deliverance Because you're going to have to get delivered from trauma You're going to have to get delivered from rejection You're going to have to get delivered from fear You're going to have to get delivered from bondage That when you prophesy And they don't receive your word That you understand it's not my word It's his word And if they reject his word That's between them and God But I'm going to get up again and prophesy again Why? Because I'm unveiling the mystery of Christ in the earth we are stewards of the mysteries of God. And God has called us to be a link between this world and that which is to come. We unveil mysteries. I believe God is raising up ox, eagle, reformers who are preaching prophets. 
I believe there is an outpouring of the Natoff anointing coming upon people. That we're going to see revelatory preaching. That we're going to see preaching prophets. That they're going to begin to open their mouth. Prophets, some of you are trying to get the anointing. Yeah, Lord. The anointing in your hands. But I just heard the Holy Ghost say, it's in your mouth and in your belly. I heard the Holy Ghost say, quit trying to stand in somebody else's jurisdiction. I heard the Holy Ghost say, when you open your mouth, I will feel it. When you open your mouth, my power will come out. I see a generation of preaching prophets that you're going to blast open territories. You're going to blast open regions with the utterance of your belly. Why have I been shut up in the secret place? Because I've been pouring into you, saith the Lord, a word for such a time as this. And when you come forth like John the Baptist, fire will be in your mouth, said the Spirit of God. Preach and prophesy. Your greatest prophecy will be what you preach out of your belly. Yeah, Lord, I see it. I heard the Holy Ghost say, there's coming some top preachers and prophets that you are going to go into stadiums and arenas and auditoriums. And as you open your mouth, the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. That's why some of you have been in the wilderness. That's why you've been on the backside of the desert. You thought God was punishing you. But God said, baby, I was not punishing you. I was perfecting you. That's why they rejected you. That's why hell came again you but God said this anointing that's going to come from your belly it's going to set the captives free it's going to shake the foundation because I've anointed you for such a time as this said the Lord God most high preach prophet 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 Have I not opened the scroll of revelation and given you access? Access granted, says the Lord. See on another dimension. Oh, the cities I put in your belly. 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 Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. I see the Lord opening up the miracle realm. He said the word of knowledge is coming alive now. Stand up, stand up. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say this mental warfare. You've been under breaks tonight. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, because I've called you to see. I've called you to know. I've called you to hear. The enemy would try to blanket your mind with attacks. But the Lord said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is the night. This is the day. This is the time it breaks, saith the Lord. There's another level of freedom coming to your mind now, saith the Spirit of God, yeah. Oh, yes. Yanda Darabashaya. Yanda Raboshaya. 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 Le Mansande. Le Kondo Nonaya. Yaya Sondo Oh God, raise up the preaching prophets. Oh God, raise up the apostolic builders. Oh God, raise up the stewards of the mysteries. Oh God, open up the scroll and feed us today, Lord. Oh God, we are coming in this convocation and we're saying, More Lord! More Lord! More Lord! For everyone that's been concealed, everyone that's been hidden, everyone that's been in the cave, I hear the lion of the tribe of Judah roaring. Come out! 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 Come out of the cave! Someone shout unto the Lord! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel something breaking in the atmosphere now. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Almighty God, we praise you tonight. Give him glory. Father, we thank you for the anointing that is in this room. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, flow, 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 preacher, flow, flow, prophet, flow, flow, marketplace minister, flow. Flow revivalist flow, flow evangelist flow, flow pastor flow, flow teacher flow, flow intercessor flow, flow 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 flow. Oh, yes. The Lord said, I'm breaking the bands over this nation. The Lord said, this nation will not be known as a quiet nation. But the Lion of Europe is waking up. The Lion of Europe is waking up. You're going to roar, says the Lord. The UK is going to roar, says the Lord. Scotland's going to roar. Northern Ireland's going to roar. London's going to roar. Manchester's going to roar. Roar! 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 Father, we thank you tonight for the Holy Spirit moving across this space, moving online. I feel a wave of his healing power. I feel a wave of impartation. Just take your seats for a few moments. Stay with me, okay? If we hit another spot, I need you. Reformation happens on three strategic levels. Number one, there's a spiritual level of reformation in the atmosphere of the spirit. There's a difference that happens when God shows up. When you reformers show up, there, often in this stage it's called awakening. The prophetic begins to open the eyes of the church. This is why prophets are under attack. Why are you under attack? Because you see, and if you don't, then I, so you need to take PMP. You see... The demon hiding in the corner everybody else overlooks. You see Jezebel sitting atop the nation. You see the spirit of religion crippling the move of God. And so as a prophet, God fills your mouth that you begin to speak what you see and the atmosphere begins to shift because atmospheres are cultivated by power. And in the kingdom, power is generated by believing and speaking. So prophets, you bring reformation or you're a part of the plan on the level of the spirit. The second level of reformation that happens is structural. There's a change in the structure. The way we do things in the spirit shall sense starts to change. If you want to be biblical about it, God gives a new wineskin. I wasn't a part of it in the 90s, but I saw the end of it that the modern prophetic movement was birthed. And they had to change money to the wineskin. Why? Because a thousand people were showing up. They all want a prophecy. 
So they had tape recorders. We didn't have iPhones then. They had tape recorders. What's your name? Oscar. Boom. Oscar, the Lord says to you, da, 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 and prophesy and give it. That was a wineskin, a mode of operations. They had to change the, how long they preached, how long they taught, the structure of the prayer lines. Isn't it amazing that we want a fresh move of God, but we don't want to change the way we do things? Revival's not coming to your church the way it is. Revival's coming to turn your church upside down. Why? Because when this kingdom collides with that kingdom, there is something's going to bow low, and it's not going to be God's kingdom. So there must be reformation structurally. People are going to begin to build in unusual ways. Some of you are going to be called by the Lord to build things digitally and physically that are mind-blowing. Groups are going to pop up. Networks are going to pop up. Movements are going to pop up. Churches that don't meet at the usual times are going to pop up. Churches where you have to get on a text list to find out where they're meeting this week are going to pop up. And people are going to go by the droves because the move of God is there. And people will say, they're not doing the seven-step follow-up, but they're filled. They're not doing the three-step uh, visitor program, but they're filled. I'm not against those structural things. Hear me, saints. But I'm saying unto you reformers that the way you build in this next season may not look like the way you built in the last season. And people will call you crazy. People will call you audacious. People will say you have lost your mind. But I came to tell you, you didn't lose your mind. You found it. Because God said there's a reformation happening in the wineskin of the church. You can't update something that is outdated. We are going to see leaders suddenly plummet their influence suddenly disappear because they refused to shift modes of operation it's sad really because the greatest opponents of a new move of God are always the ones who were catalysts of the last move of God we need to learn in a spiritual sense how to ride the waves God is moving prophetically jump on the wave God is moving in deliverance jump on the wave God is moving and teaching, jump on the wave. That doesn't mean you have to ride the wave the way everybody else is riding the wave. You find your GPS in the midst of the wave of the glory of God. But God brings reformation for spiritually awakening. You're awakened to something you didn't know and see. That's a prophetic act. Secondly, structurally, that's an apostolic act. Why? Because Paul said we are wise master builders. One of the main things apostles build other than revelation on the earth is they build functionality or structures. How are you going to be a prophetic apostle and you don't build a prophetic structure? How are you going to be a teacher of teachers and you don't build a school? Why well, can't get everyone to come to a class? That's old school. You don't get everyone to come to a class now. You get everybody online now. Then get them in your meta classroom. And then I don't know where it's going after that. So you have to shift your wineskin. The move of God is going to demand structural reformation. And the third and most prolific level of revelation is mental revela uh, re reformation. Why? Because the inner belief systems that are tied to wrong teaching, wrong thinking, must be confronted, uprooted, and dismantled. Why? Because there's warfare at this level. This is why some of you reformers are in such a state of warfare. Because the enemy hates the potential that is being carried in your loins. And the enemy understands God has sent you to change the mind of the body of Christ. You can get hands laid on you. Prophecy after prophecy. And nothing shift in your life. Because there's a root system. I remember in America, there was this big controversy two years ago at the time of the election. It was a lot of our leading prophets prophesied Trump was going to win. And then there was a controversy. Did they miss it? Did Trump win? And they stole the election, did this, did this. And I probably sat in on 10 private meetings over this to the point I just blew in the face like I don't want to even talk about it anymore. But I realized 
the fear that was in people because their belief system was so tied into a thing. And God was shaking their belief system to say, I'm bigger than that thing. I'm bigger than who your prime minister is. I'm bigger than who your president is. I'm bigger than who your parliamentary member is. I'm bigger than who your king or queen is. Personally, I'm glad I live in a nation we don't have a monarchy, but praise the Lord for that. I'm bigger than that. God is shifting our belief system. But many of us have wrong things rooted inside of us. And so I remember people saying to me, Ryan, uh, what should we do? Everybody in our network is losing confidence in the prophets. Has this thing shaken your network? I said, it hasn't shaken anything I do. They said, why? I said, because we don't live based on prophecy in our network. I didn't see in Romans 8, 15, as many as are led by the spirit of prophecy. That's not what it said. Verse 14 said, as many as are led, that don't mean someone else telling you everything to do. That don't mean you got a prophetic word of the conference, so you're going to now move to Africa because you got one word and God never told you to move. But because you got one word, now you're going to move. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. Why is the church so lustful for prophecies? Because they vacated their position of priesthood. So we weren't shaken. Because we understand we're not led by prophecies. Human beings are fallible. But God is not. This is why we have to humble ourselves in the mighty hand of God. That he'll exalt us in due time. That when God speaks a word from the mouth of a prophet and it's a pure word from God, it will shift the trajectory of our life. But that word cannot supersede what you believe about yourself and God. If a prophet prophesies you're going to prosper, but you believe being broke is your portion. Your belief system will override the prophetic word of the Lord for your life. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Jesus said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your life is moving in the direction of your dominant thought. So there must be a reformation in the way we think. We cannot be just a feeling people. We cannot be just a sensory driven people. We must be a thinking people. That when we are called upon for counsel, we don't just say ignorant things that people will clap over in a church service. But we have the counsel, the brilliance, and the genius of God living on the inside of us. We are solutionists in a time of crisis. So when God begins to bring reformation, he brings it into the belief system. Who brings that reformation primarily? Teachers. Teachers bring that reformation. Line upon line, they begin to shift the thought process of the church. Apostolic building means infusing a generation with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the healer. Jesus Christ, the builder. Jesus Christ, the psalmist. Jesus Christ, the deliverer. Jesus Christ, the architect. Jesus Christ, the redeemer. Jesus Christ, the restorer. Jesus Christ, the bloodline breaker. We begin to infuse the body of Christ. That is what we do. It means you've got to be willing to be rejected, persecuted, misunderstood. Why? Because of your revelation. You see, Satan is going to fight your revelation. One of the marks of an apostolic anointing is revelation. God assigns stewardship of messages to apostolic leaders to populate the earth with, to build the earth with. Why have we become awakened in the last 20 years to the reality of the prophetic and the apostolic because God has encountered some prophets and some apostles and some teachers and some evangelists and some pastors that would begin to speak in the public place what God said in the secret place. And they've infused their generation. But why do we have warfare? Because Satan always comes to steal the word. You see, the Bible says in Mark 4, 15, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. 
But when they've heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Satan does not come later. Satan comes immediately. Why do you get a prophetic word about breakthrough and then you leave the service and get a bad phone call? Because Satan comes immediately. Watch this now. He's not just coming to steal the word. He's not just coming to steal the experience. He's not just coming to steal the encounter. He's coming to steal your faith because Satan understands without faith you cannot please God. It takes faith to please God. If you believe God, you're going to please God. If you please God, you're going to receive from God. So the warfare is over revelation. Apostolic builders, apostolic reformers, let me tell you that Satan hates your revelation. Satan hates the mysteries inside of you. Satan hates the wisdom inside of you. Satan hates the sermons inside of you. Satan hates the revelation inside of you. And you are not going into warfare just because of you. You are going into warfare because of your revelation. Immediately, Satan comes to steal. You see, institutions, organizations, networks, churches can be created from the heart of man. If you're talented enough, you can create something. But authentic reform is birthed in the heart of God and intended to be released into the earth as a divine update to the operating systems of humanity. We are God's change agents. The word reform as a verb means to put or change into an improved form or condition. To amend or improve by change of form or removal of faults and abuses. There we get back to the prophets. Prophets hate injustice. Prophets will speak up when no one else will. Prophets will cry aloud. Prophets will stand in the marketplace and cry out. Prophets will stand in the church and cry out. Prophets will stand up to racism and cry out. Prophets will stand up to you know, a political systems that bind people and cry out. Prophets will stand up to immoral uh, thought processes and practices and cry out. Prophets will stand up to institutions that bind people up and cry out. Prophets will stand in the midst of the church when the church is not moving in the right direction and cry out. That's why the devil hates you, prophets, because you carry in you a sound of reformation. You carry it on the inside of you. Thank you. I was looking for it. Keep it. Just keep it where I can see it if you would, please. God said to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of them. I'm with you to deliver you. And then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said, behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I've appointed you this day over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, and to build and to plant four negative things before two positive. You can't build and plant if you don't pluck up. Deliverance, pluck up. Well, I don't believe God could use women to preach. You better get that plucked up out of you. I believe if you serve God, you have to be poor. You better get that plucked up out of you. Well, I just, I don't believe you could just prophesy because you have a prophetic presbytery and you're just telling people you're going to lay hands and prophesy. No, I don't believe. You better pluck that up out of you. Prophets, pluck it up. You can't build and plant till you're willing to pluck some stuff up. The greatest garden of deception is not in your belly, it's not in your hands, not in your feet, it's in your mind. It has to be plucked up. Because you can't receive the move of God until your mind is renewed. Quickly, let me give you seven ingredients of a kingdom reformation. We're going to be done. We're going to begin to impart, prophesy, and pray for you. Number one is a strong apostolic spirit. I don't mean that you've got a certificate. There are crazy people that have certificates. And some of you are in this room that you say you're apostles, you don't stay nowhere for no time. You've had four different leaders in four years. I'm telling you the truth. I love you. I appreciate you. But how in the world can you lead people when you yourself can't be led? Well, I outgrew my leader. Well, they were mean to me. 
Maybe God allowed them to be mean to you to see, would you be able to obey an instruction when it didn't feel good? I don't know how God talks to you. Sometimes God says to me, Ryan, shut up. Don't talk like that. Don't say that. Don't do that. We have an epidemic of weak people calling themselves apostles. Well, I just, you know, Apostle Juanita, I know her father's church, and I saw her, and she didn't shake my hand. And now you got a spirit of offense, but you're out preaching. I'm Apostle so-and-so. I'm a, no, 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 no. You need to go back to evangelist. You may be even elder, maybe even deacon here. I need you to come and hold my towel for me. I know some of you are upset with me, but you weren't going to give anything in the offering anyway, so it's all right. I had a young man call me. He said, I'm leaving my leader. I said, I know your leader. Your leader's had five spiritual fathers in five years. He's confused. He's demonized. I have a word from the Lord for you. Run, 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 baby, run. But then I called him back and said, now we got to get your leader out of you because you're opportunistic like your leader. You're thinking like your leader. You're moving like your leader. We need to get healed in the house of God. So I wanted to clarify what I meant by a strong apostolic spirit. It means government. It means you send people. You've got a divine ability to send people into another trajectory of destiny. If you only have an ability to send yourself, you, ma'am, or you, sir, have not yet graduated into apostolicity. You've got to activate and send other people. One of the technologies of the apostolic is impartation. There's a divine ability to release something that shifts the trajectory of your life. The second ingredient of kingdom reformation is a mature and healthy prophetic community. Why? Because we need to corporately digest and discern the word of the Lord. We need to identify the opposition to a promise in a territory. We need to identify the word of the Lord over a territory. We need accurate diagnosis and insight. Some of us are binding Jezebel when we're really fighting Leviathan. We need accurate diagnosis. I bind you, Jezebel. I bind you. And Jezebel's not even there. It's a stiff-necked, prideful Leviathan spirit. We need diagnosis. Prophets are those that carry diagnosis. The third key of reformation, we need worship and intercession. In Isaiah, it said, the key of the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulder. What he shall open, none shall shut. What he shall shut, none shall open. That was speaking of apostolic and prophetic function. And it was saying there's a governmental realm of prayer and worship. We, I love uh, certain kinds of worship and certain spaces of worship. But I want to just interject and say, if the only form of worship you know is bridal room worship, where you lay in the floor for 10 hours, but you never get up and pray. You never get up and bind. You never get up and loose. Then you, my friend, are are missing one of the key ingredients of government. There's a sound of government. There's a sound of authority. I, I just... Oh, I just feel the Lord here. There's a place for that. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, there's a place of intimacy, a bridal worship. But that is not the only posture of worship. Judah did not go out like this. Judah didn't go out like that. Israel would have still remained captive if Judah didn't have a sound. Judah had a sound. There's a sound of worship. There's a sound of praise. There's a sound where our spirit steps into a thing before our body does, before our mind does. There's a sound of victory. There's a sound of a clash in the heavenlies. And there is an intermingling of intercession and worship where we are governing the atmosphere. We are not just worshiping for ourselves. We are not just worshiping for our conference. We're releasing a sound over the United Kingdom. We're releasing a sound over London. We're releasing a sound over Ireland. We're releasing a sound over the nation. And we're announcing the King of Glory is marching in. And we are praying. And we are prophesying. And we are praising like we believe we've got authority. Because God laid the key of David on our shoulder. What we open, no man shall shut. 
The fourth thing we need is a wineskin to host the move of God. I already talked about that. Apostolic leaders are movement directors. They direct how to facilitate the move of God. If God is moving over here, let's shift the schedule. Let's change this. Let's raise up this team. Oh, now, God is doing this. He's telling us to train and educate people. Let's start an online school. Now we have people wanting to come in person. Let's get a classroom where people can come in person. Okay, God is speaking to us. We need to go to the streets. Let's start training prophetic evangelists and send them to the streets. See, they move with God. And they create a facilitation. Not only the apostles, but the gift of governance. We have a lot of people who think they're teachers and apostles, but they're gifts of governance. And it's confusing because governments have the same insight that apostles do. But they don't have the same supernatural power. So a lot of you that are very apostolic and you're thinking, and you can plan stuff out, but you're very dry spiritually. There's not a sound that comes out of you. Miracles don't happen. You, you, you're very smart and prolific, but there's not an authority. It's because you are a gift of government. And you've been misdiagnosed as an apostle. And so you are a powerless apostle because you are not operating in the frequency of which God directed your life. Mm -mm. You are called to be governmental. And you are, because a gift of governments is an apostolic administrator. When the apostle gets a vision, it is governments that says, we're going to break it down here, 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 here. Do this, 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 that, that, that. And then helps comes in and begins to serve the vision as the gift of governments has helped to line it all out. So it is the apostolic and the governmental anointing that will host, that will create the wineskin. The fifth ingredient is teaching. Teaching is what sustains the move of God because you only sustain what you believe. You do not sustain what you only experience unless the experience changes what you believe. I had this issue because I was saved uh, and raised spiritually once I got saved in a movement that we believe you can only prophesy if the Spirit moved upon you. So if somebody came up and said, I want a prophetic word, we would immediately shut that down. So I, I was at a conference, and I was sitting at the head table. I was on the board of this ministry in this region. And I was at the head table, and there was a woman from Christian International. Sweet little white woman from Christian International. And she said, how many of you are not going to be here tomorrow night? And half the people raised their hand. I said, that's so nice. She's going to greet them. And she said, then we're going to prophesy over all of you tonight. And immediately that religious spirit rose up, and I folded my arms. I don't believe in that. You can't prophesy at will. Well, that little woman caught a glimpse of me doing that, and she started walking towards me. I started saying, I bind it. You're not going to prophesy to me. I don't receive this. I don't want this. I was putting out mental, emotional, spiritual, uh, any sign like, please, please pick up on, I don't want you to prophesy to me. And she came over and read my mail from top to bottom. I had an experience, watch this, and then I had to change my theology. Experience that shifts your thinking will produce lasting change, but an experience without a shift in thinking will not bring change. So we need teaching to say in the move of God. Fifthly, we need an apostolic company along with apostolic teams. Apostolic teams are fivefold strike forces that go in for a particular assignment. Apostolic companies are groups of believers that occupy a territory together. Apostolic churches and hubs and ministry centers are apostolic companies. We need apostolic teams, which means there's teachers on the team. And some prophets and evangelists will get mad at the teachers because God said, we just need to give people a word. The teachers say, no, no, we need to teach them the word. Pastors say, we just need to love them. We just can love them enough. They'll get deliverance. And the teacher said, oh, no, they're not going to get deliverance. So we root them in the word. I have a sermon on 10 steps to deliverance. And there's friction. And God uses the friction to sharpen our gifts. We need apostolic teams apostolic companies and lastly we need a fresh flow of oil there has to be the oil of the lord in our midst we need the oil of activation we need the power of god flowing he said in psalms 133 it was like the oil flowing down upon the beard of aaron all the way to his garments everything attached to him was blessed it's the law of attachment you will manifest what you are attached to the Bible said in the book of Proverbs, don't make friendship with an angry man lest you learn his ways and become a snare to your soul. 
but you attached to creates a love. God brought you to convocation because of attachment. And there's a flow that's being released over your life. Yeah, Lord, I feel it. I feel it today. Psalms 23, 5 said, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. This anointing, this reformation is going to cause increase to hit your life. If your cup is full, that's good. But when your cup runs over, that means the table's getting wet. If your cup keeps running over, that means people's feet sitting around the table are getting wet. That means your neighbor's getting wet. That means people around you are getting wet. And what the Spirit of the Lord is saying is he's saying, I'm bringing you to a place of increase that you are running over. We were having a service at our ministry at Hill Hub. My sister, Providence Sophia Ruffin, was preaching. And I was standing. I mostly stand when people are preaching because I get excited. And I was standing over the corner. And the Lord said to me, I want you to give her $5,000. I said, praise God. I'm going to make sure and tell the administrator, add that on to her honorarium. And the Spirit of the Lord said, I didn't tell you that I wanted the ministry to give her $5,000. I want you to give her $5,000. I said, the devil, you're a liar. I'm up here just enjoying the word of the Lord. I couldn't shake it. I leaned over to my wife and said, babe, I think the Lord just spoke to me to give Sophia $5,000. She said, the Lord just spoke to me as well. I said, go to her sister and get her personal cash out. The minute my wife went and did that, my phone vibrated. I forgot in my birthday, one of my spiritual daughters said, hey, I want to sow a particular seed to you. And she was $9,000 short. I think, is that right? Thumbs up. It's $9,000 short. And so I forgot about it. My birthday was many months before this. And my phone vibrates. And the other $9,000 from her seed just came through my PayPal 30 seconds after I just said, God, I'll give Sophia $5,000. About two days later, I'm sitting on my couch thinking about a preacher I haven't heard from in a while. I'm like, I wonder what's going on. I haven't heard from him forever. My phone vibrates. I pick up my phone. It's my PayPal. I look, that preacher I'm thinking about just sent me a $5,000 seed. In about 48 hours, $14,000 came from my $5,000 seed. My cup was running over. If your cup is full, you don't have enough. Not enough to abound. You have enough for you, and that's good, but not enough to abound. God wants your cup, your cup, your cup. We were hosting a conference, and we were really struggling in these conferences financially. It was, it was a number of years ago. We were just we were doing good to break even in profit. And so um, we got this guest speaker, this woman. She got up, and she received the offering. And she said, the Lord told me that Ryan and I was partnering with another person at the conference. They're not supposed to struggle anymore in these conferences. And she raised this offering, and it just broke wide up the, the budget. And so after the conference, my wife, and the other person I was hosting the conference with came. He said, what do you want to give so-and-so? There was two offerings that night, one for the speaker and the one she raised for us. I said, just give whatever you all feel. I'm tired. I don't care what you do. Just give. So I went back the next day and said to my wife, hey, what did we give so-and-so? She said, everything. I said, everything like her offering, right? Not the one she raised for us. She said, no, everything, both. I said, the devil is a liar. Did you not hear she was raising that offering for us? My wife said, babe, do you want a seed or a harvest? I said, I want a harvest. So we sowed it. That is the last conference we ever struggled to meet a budget. As God is my witness, we went to another level. Because God put his hand upon a seed. Part of the law of attachment is sowing. Paul taught us that when you receive from a source, you reciprocate financially. God is not after your money. God did not need my $5,000. God didn't need us to give that offering. God didn't, it was a test. God could have got that money. You need to understand this. God can do tonight whatever God wants to do. Whatever's in God's heart. If it's in God's heart, to raise 10,000 pounds, he can do it tonight. If it's in God's heart to raise 100,000 pounds, 
He can do it today. The question is, will you be a part of God's healing? That's the question. And it's the only question. Well, I don't want to do that. It's not about what you want to do. It's about what God wants to do through you and in you. If you're a reformer, you're a bloodline breaker. You're going to break your whole family out. Your, your seed is about your breakthrough. So I want you to posture your heart tonight and ask the Lord, Lord, what is the seed you're putting your hand on? Those of you online, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is the seed you're putting your hand on? Yeah. Let's pray. I felt the Lord, right when I said that, I felt the Lord telling somebody, I'm not going to call for you to tell me, but I felt it in my heart. The Lord telling someone 5,000 pounds was the seed he was commanding from me. In fact, I've sent, that's why he had me tell that story. I sense there are at least 10 of you in the room that God is challenging you to give a 1,000 pound seed. There are many of you on Facebook or wherever this being streamed. I don't know where this streaming is, but the Lord is speaking to you. And I want to pray. We're going to have a tremendous impartation in a few moments. The Lord showed me people are going to be healed. People are going to receive the power and the presence of God. But we're going to sow first. We're going to sow first. There are many of you, the Lord is speaking to you about your ministry and business to give a $500 seed. Some of you say, I cannot give that, either of those. Some of you can give a 100-pound seed. Ask the Lord right now. Some of you are going to get a number different than anyone I've called out. Ask Him, Lord, I thank you right now for the Holy Spirit that is flowing in this room and online, speaking to the hearts of people about their next level and their next season. Some have flown here. Some have driven. They've come a great distance. Some are online from other nations. They've come a great distance to be a part of this. And I believe you want to shift the trajectory of their economy. The Lord says, I'll give you one idea that will add a zero or several zeros onto your net worth. Holy Spirit, speak to your people right now. In the authority of the name of Jesus, ask them, eyes closed, eyes closed. Eyes closed, eyes closed. Those online, ask the Lord what he wants you to give. If you're in this building and you are one of those 10 that say, I feel prompted according to your, what you're saying, man of God, I feel prompted to be one of those ones to sow a thousand pounds. Put your hand up. I feel like there's 10 of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You say, I can't do that, but I feel I can sow 500 pounds. Put your hand up. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's not going to me. It's going into this gathering, this conference. Those of you online, I can't see your response, but the Lord is with you. If you say, I can't do either of those, but I'll do 100 pounds. I feel free to do that. Put your hand up. Thank you. God gave you a different number or you have a different level of ability to sow. Put your hand up. But we are going to give what God told us. Now, Father, I thank you that as we sow tonight, you're going to cause men to give into our bosom good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's serve the people, workers and ministers. If you're online, there are a number of digital ways you can give PayPal, Cash App in the UK or Cash App in the US. If you're in the building, you want to give digitally. Just scan those QR codes. Can they give cash or any other way or is that it? If you have a cash offering, prepare it and put it on the altar as soon as you have it ready. Ushers and, and workers, if there's anything you need to give to the people, do y'all do envelopes or no? No? Okay. Just prepare your seed right now. Come on quickly. Let's sow this. Musicians, will you minister to us? Just sow this right now. Just release this seed right now. Those that are sowing 1,000, those that are sowing 500, those that are sowing 100, those that are sowing 5,000, those that are sowing 25, those that are sowing 5, just release that seed. The cash app information is on the screen. Get your phone out. If you want to give cash, prepare your cash offering, come put it. Thank you. Bring those. Come put it in the baskets as we minister to the Lord these next few moments. Then we're going to begin to pray. on, bring your offerings to the Lord. If you're giving digitally, go ahead and do that now.
Come on, just so. Just release your seed. Father, I thank you. I thank you that the heavens are open right now. I thank you that as we are sowing in, in person and online, the heavens are being opened right now. Come on, the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord said there's a Zebulun anointing coming upon the people in 2023. Some of you that have never been in business before, you're going to begin to move in business. Some of you that have been in business, you're going to go to another level. Some of you are going to break from six figures to seven figures. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Some of your ministries are going to go to another level, another dimension. So, Father, I thank you as we're releasing our seed now. I thank you that the anointing of the Spirit of God is beginning to blow right now. Come on. I thank you, oh God, that the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord is beginning to blow in this place. The Lord said, I'm turning up the ground. I'm tilling the ground. I'm breaking up the hard ground. I'm breaking up the fallow ground. I'm breaking up the ground that they said they'd never move in my spirit. I'm breaking it up, says the Lord, for yes, I'm loosing reformation upon your life. Yes, I'm loosing reformation upon your ministry. Yes, I'm loosing reformation upon your family. Yes, I'm loosing reformation upon everything attached to you, says the Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord. Can I get someone to just throw your head back and begin to speak in tongues right now? Oh, bye-bye, Come on, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Santa Rabande. Shedere de la Bondo. Santa de Boboshai. Hedamababanse. Just flow with me. Go ahead and begin to sing. Father, we thank you for the wind of your spirit. Release your spirit. Come on. Release your spirit. Come on, release your spirit. Release your spirit. Oh, Papa Revanto. Oh, Papa Begin to blow. Just stand up, woman of God. The Lord said, I'm healing your lower back. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm healing your lower back. The Lord said, you'll not have pain there anymore. My anointing, my glory, my power is coming on you now. We're going to lift your hands up to measure you. Grow out now in Jesus' name. Release Be healed. Spirit, God. Yeah, Release your spirit, God. Release your spirit. Release your spirit. Release your spirit. I want to pray for you, Juanita. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, there's another level of prophetic fluency that's coming to you. God said you're going to begin to move in another level of prophetic fluency. He said that prophetic is going to flow out of you so strong in this hour, it'll shock you. The Lord said you're going to see things in a way you've never seen things before. But the Lord said, daughter, I have need of your voice. The Lord said, daughter, prophesy, 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 prophesy. Father, I loose the prophetic anointing. Yeah, bye, 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 bye. Oh, yes. The Lord said, I've opened your eyes to see regions, to see territories, to see people for, groups. The Lord said, for, don't be shocked and surprised for, when I begin to take you up into heavens and show you things about territories for, and peoples. The Lord said, daughter, I have a teaching ministry inside of you. The Lord said, you're going to teach and disciple. You're going to train and mentor. And the Lord said, it seems almost like you've been in a season personally, a quiet season. And the Lord said, it's been a healing season. It's been a season of drinking from the still waters. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring you forth in the latter part of 2023 with a fresh revelation of intimacy. You're going to teach people about the intimate places of fellowship with me because it's where you've lived. It's where you've sustained. It's where you've breathed. It's where you've built. Is that place of intimacy. And the Lord said, you're going to overflow. You're going to overflow, God. And people will be healed. And people will be delivered. And people will be blessed as you minister. 
from that place of intimacy. Father, I thank you for an elevated function in the teaching grace and anointing. Deep. It's happening now in this room. There's five people online that back pain is being healed. The Lord said, You and I have that back pain. We lose the healing power of God online. Come here, Christian Bianca. Father, I thank you for Germany. I thank you for the anointing that's upon my life. I thank you, Lord, as I lay my hands. So then I ask you for another level, another dimension in the authority of the name of Jesus. The Lord said, he's not finished. Yes, there's been some setbacks. But God said, I'm reloading you now. I'm reloading you now. The Lord said, there's going to be powerful miracles that happen when you lay hands upon the sick. They're going to recover. Deep. 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 Stay there, but quiet. God, I see the Spirit of God doing something in your physical body. I see the Spirit of God strengthening you. Particularly, I see the Spirit of God going into your heart. I see the Spirit of God bringing such a strength there that's literally extending your life. And God said, because of the powerful intercession mantle and mandate that's on your life, the enemy would love to disrupt that. But God said, I've strengthened, I have strengthened you and sustained you. And I'm bringing you forth with more strength and more sustained. And the Lord said, your heart is being touched by the power and the anointing of God. God said, there will not be anything that disrupts your life prematurely. There will not be any irregularity of being. There will not be any irregularity of rhythm. But God said, with perfection, I will sustain you because my anointing and my power is upon you. Father, Father, I thank you for your power upon this woman of God. Deep calls on the deep. Deep calls on the deep. Deep calls on the deep. Healing rivers flow right now. Right now. Right now. Healing rivers begin to flow right now. Deep calls on the deep. Deep calls on the deep. Oh God, let your healing rivers begin to flow now. Flow, Holy Spirit. Healing rivers. Healing rivers begin to flow. Healing rivers. We release the healing anointing in this room right now. We release the healing anointing online right now. Father, we thank you for the power of your spirit moving now. I believe there's three people in this room, and there may be many online, but there's three in this room that you have partial deafness or total deafness in one ear. The Lord told me he's going to heal you. I've asked Prophet Otis and Prophet Kelton to help me with this part. There's three of you, and I, if that's you, you can hear out of an ear, partially or totally. I want you to come quickly. I believe there's a minimum of three of you. I sense that strongly. There's three of you. God wants to restore your hearing. God wants to restore your hearing. 
I don't care if it's total, just stand right there. I don't care if it's partial. Say, hey, I can't hear whispers. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Come on, people of God, how many believe there's going to be a miracle in this room? Yeah. Keep them here, but something's happening with that lady. Bring her right here. Quick, can you just bring her? Come with her. Come on, come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. The Lord said the trauma is breaking off of you. Come on. Bring her, bring her, bring her. Yeah, thank you. Go now in Jesus' name. Trauma, go. I pluck up every tormenting spirit. I command you, go from her in Jesus' name. Let her go, let her go. Loose her. I loose the peace of God. Father, I thank you for the power of God. We command every deaf and dumb spirit to come out in Jesus' name. We command these ears to open. Lord, we ask you for a creative miracle. I want all the people of God online in the room to begin to pray. Otis and Kelly, go ahead. Father, we thank you for the power of God. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. We release the anointing of God. what was wrong she couldn't hear out of the left side of her ear and um, I went back and I went back and I went back and yeah, now she can never see I want to see it again so you couldn't hear out of that ear okay so cl close the other ear and just I want you to see if you can hear him. her eyes are closed Come on, she's hearing him, saints. Give the Lord a praise. Father, we bless you. Healing rivers flow. 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 healing power oh God right now we release your healing power I command arthritis to go I command uh, pain and infirmity and affliction to go inflammation to go fibromyalgia to go uh, pain in the wrist to go pain in the knee to go pain in the back to go I command cataracts to go I command tumors to go I command lumps to go I command growths to go father we release your healing rivers if you have pain anywhere in your body I want you to put your hand on the place where there's pain. Father, I thank you for the power of God right now flowing. The power of God flowing. I felt someone's lower back just get touched by the power of God. I felt somebody else's right knee behind the knee actually get touched by the power of God. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. I felt someone's right shoulder just get healed. I felt someone's left elbow get healed. I felt somebody that you you fell down some stairs and your lower back has had pain in the middle of it ever since. God said, I'm healing it right now. 
I felt someone else that the doctor said, well, you got arthritis. There's nothing we can do. The Lord shows me he's healing your bones right now. The deterioration of the bones are being healed right now. In Jesus' name, somebody's meniscus in their knee is being healed right now. A bulging disc is being healed right now. Migraine headaches are being healed right now. Nasal sinus cavity pain is being healed right now. Spotty vision is being healed right now. Father, I thank you for the power of the Spirit of God. Begin to flow right now. Just receive while your hand is on that part of your body. Receive it. There's no distance in the Spirit at home or in the Spirit. I loose the healing anointing. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. There he goes. There he goes. Be healed now. Someone's jaw, you have pain in your jaw. It's be healed right now. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the authority of the name of Jesus, be healed right now. I'm going to count to three. I want you to check yourself. If, if it hurts to move or bend, I want you to check yourself. One. Two. Someone's neck just got healed. Three. Try to move, try to do something you couldn't do without pain. I realize some things are internal, but those that are pain related, try to do what you could not do. Come on, Father, we thank you for the power of God. Now, if you're in this section and you say, hey, when I moved, I had less pain, wave at me in this section right here. Praise God. What about no pain? Did anybody would say, I have no pain now after the prayer? You have less pain though. This section, anyone have less pain than before we pray? Less? Anyone did the pain leave altogether? Yeah? Where did you have pain, brother? Your neck? How long? A few weeks. What about the lady back there? Your lower back? And it left you. Come on, give God glory for that. Give God glory for that. What about this section right here? Anybody have less pain or no pain? Wave at me. Come on, the lady in the white, where did you have pain? Show me what you couldn't do without pain before. Come on, look at Jesus. He's going to get stronger and stronger. He's going to get stronger and stronger. The Spirit of the Lord says the intercession anointing is about to hit your belly. The Lord says, I've called you to intercession. The Lord says, I've called you to fiery prayer. The Lord says, I've called you to travail. I've called you to the groan of the Spirit. The Lord says, I'm loosing another level of the groan. Remande de de rebo shaya kakando. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ke baba. Yeah, wants to take it, take it. The river of healing is flow. The river of healing is flow. The river of healing is flow. Oh, we thank your Holy Ghost. 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 Receive it, receive it, receive his power. Receive his power. Lord said oppression won't stay. Fear won't stay. Come on, begin to pray, begin to pray. Father, we want your anointing. Come here. We want your anointing. Receive it now. We want your anointing. We want your anointing. We want your anointing. We receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Receive it now. Receive it now. I feel something falling on you right now. Receive it now. Yeah, yeah, take it. Come on, come on, I feel it. Take it. Lord said there's a fire burning you. Receive it. 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 Oh, the Lord said these mind battles are broken. These mind battles are broken. These mind battles are broken. But the promise is the river of healing. The river of healing. The Lord said it stops with you. Yes, you are black mind broken. Yes, you are black mind broken. Yes, you are black mind broken. I loose you now to go home. Come on, pray. Come on, musicians. Let's go up. 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 Let's go
That's it. That's it. There it goes. Something's breaking on the roof now. It's breaking. Come on, Mr. Come on, Psalmist. Break, break, break. 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 Wide open. Come here, David said. God said, catch that mantle for revival, not only for Ireland, but nation. 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 God said, I've unlocked the sound. Break. 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 Break, break, break. We loose the anointing. We loose the anointing, God. Break, break, break. Give him another vision. Give him another vision. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. Break, wide open. 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 Wow. 
Lord said, son, I'm giving you a passion for my presence like never before. You'll be known we are under as John the Beloved, one who dwell in my presence. We are under one who valued my presence more than the fiery trials have come to teach you the value of my presence. We are under release fresh oil over your life, over your ministry, over your mandate, over your assignment. Over every preacher in this room, every preacher online, we ask you, O oh God, for fresh oil, the oil of your presence. Fall upon every preacher. 2023 be a year like none other, a year of outpouring, a year of revelation. Oh, yeah, come on. We release it over ministries now. Fresh prophetic oil. Fresh wind of momentum, fresh wind of increase, fresh oil of harvest. In the name of Jesus, preachers preach, prophets prophesy, evangelists preach, teachers teach, apostles build, pastors feed, intercessors pray, minstrels flow, psalmists prophesy, flow, 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 flow. We loose the anointing on you now, Jesus. Fresh wind, fresh oil. Fresh wind, fresh oil, 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 fresh wind. Fresh oil, fresh wind, 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 fresh oil, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh oil, 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 fresh wind, fresh oil. That's where to create fresh oil, fresh wind. I want you to stretch your hands towards Dr. O, the man of God. We're gonna pray for him and I called you two young prophets to help prophesy. So, Father, I'll start, then y'all prophesy, then we'll, I'll lay hands on him and pray. Father, I thank you for this man of God. The Lord said this would be a year of governmental authority. The Lord said, son, I will raise you as a master instructor to the nations of the world. The Lord said, I will give you a premier institute far beyond what you've seen and known in times past. The Lord said your influence will reach even the remote regions. The Lord said you will be a pioneer of this next move of kingdom advancement. The Lord said you have the ability to move even in and out of different streams that you've never moved in and out of before. And the Lord said I'm going to cause strategic kingdom alliances and alignments to form. And you will have a, a handful of those that will be a part of the catalyst of your next level, of your next phase of ministry and momentum, says the Lord. It will not just be limited. It will be very potent in the borders of the Brook Place, but it won't be limited there. Your voice will go beyond even the structure you're building because the Lord said, I'm using you as an apostolic hammer and a prophetic fire under the nations, but I'm going to use you to ground people and to balance people. The Lord said, you will be one that trains thousands upon thousands of students around the world, and you will release cutting-edge prophets. You'll release many other gifts, but that'll be the dominant thing. I've called you to be a father of prophets and prophetic people around the nations of the world. Yes, you will have company of apostles, and yes, you'll have pastors, and yes, you'll have teachers, and yes, you'll have evangelists, but the primary and dominant thing that will be known 
for those attached to your mantle is that you are a father of a new and emerging prophetic movement that would arise to meet the needs of this generation, saith the Spirit of God. I'll give you great favor. I'll give you great influence. The Lord said, I'm going to begin to draw people that understand technology to you. And they'll begin to build out the technological side of what I'm speaking to you in the secret place, saith the Spirit of God. And though it will be an overwhelming project, it will be done with supernatural momentum and ease. I heard the Lord, Spirit of the Lord say, in this season, I see invitations coming from all over. But the Lord says, walk carefully. Because it's going to get to a place where you could go everywhere some, once a week, twice a week. But the Lord says, be careful what doors you walk through. And I see the Lord literally giving you prophetic instructions before the invitation comes. I see you sitting at your desk and sitting in your home, and you all of a sudden you'll see yourself in Australia. You'll see yourself there before the invitation comes. Lord says, be careful to walk through those doors. Lord says, I'm going to show you and highlight what doors you're supposed to walk to, through. And the Lord says, in this season, even some of the things when you were first brought into the call, the things that he showed you, glimpses of the future. You're getting ready to walk into it. And the Lord says, I'm building a family around you that can handle the weight of the call. That can handle the weight of the call. And many people will say, he surely does have an apostolic team and a prophetic family because they guard him and up held him. And the Lord says, get ready for strange visitations. I know you don't sleep much, but I see the Lord literally rolling into your home and almost like this weighty glory coming in. And the Lord says, I'm increasing my glory on you even for this season. And that's why even some of these things have been bubbling up in the inside of you, even in studying. The Lord says, there's a, there's a, there's a weight of glory that's coming upon you because it's because this glory is for the nations this glory goes beyond this glory is the kind of glory when you begin to speak people begin to get healed the Lord says get ready because strange visitations unusual visitations with my glory unusual you'll just be you'll just be in your house and all of a sudden and the Spirit of the Lord says, get ready for movement. I see kings in Africa going to call for your name. And I had a dream about you last night. And in this dream, there was kings that was calling from you from Africa. And they was asking for the word of the Lord. And it's like you was typing up the word of the Lord. But they wanted your stamp, your signature on the word of the Lord. And the Lord is strengthening the, the, your voice in this season. But not just your, your prophetic voice, but even your voice as a father. And the Lord says, you're going to have more sons, not just in the UK, but in the USA, in Europe. In Africa, the Lord is stretching your capacity in this season. And the Lord says, son, do not worry about what you have not got around you right now. But watch and see what I will do. For I will open doors that no man can close, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, son, watch how I even move you to certain regions that you know I've spoken to you about. The Lord says, get ready for jewel. I hear the word jewel, jewel, jewel. Jewel, jewel, jewel. Get ready for jewel citizenship, I hear the Lord saying. But the Lord's going to move you into spaces and spheres that you belonged for. But the journey is just about to begin for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. So, Father, we stretch our right hand towards this man of God, my spiritual son, his wife, Pastor Triumph, their team, everybody attached them. And we release a fresh anointing over him. The Lord said, I'm going to release an anointing to build like no other. We loose that oil now in Jesus. is flowing here. We thank you for that anointing flowing every every person over Pastor Dabo, over Apostle Phil, over Apostle Davidson, over Bishop Keith, over Prophet Timothy, over Apostle Toby, over every person in this room and online. I thank you for these men and women of Can we just stay there for a moment of consecration?
register for PMP, I would admonish you in this moment. I believe that Apostle Oscar is about to do great exploits through this program. We meet virtually, but it is like a, a physical classroom where you can grow alongside people and be equipped in the things of God. It is not strange that you came here today for education, for impartation, to be matured in the things of God. Don't let your journey stop here. Invest in yourself. Invest into the world. Be an answer. Be a solution. Now this course starts February 1st. And I've heard many people say, Kalani, I do not have it right now. I will work with you as long as you are willing to invest in yourself. I will make sure there is a way that you can be a part of this program. It is 13 weeks. We meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. G uh, GMT. It is an awesome curriculum, but not just that. Apostle births you. There is testimonies. And I want you to stand up right now if you are a part of PMP. If you ever been a part of SAPA, REP, uh, all the programs, make some noise right now. Now, every person that raised their hand, I know they have a testimony. They didn't just leave this program with a certificate, but they left with fruit. And that's what it's about in the earth, birthing fruit, creating fruit that men and women can eat from and reproducing that in the earth. And so I admonish you, scan the QR code on your wristband. Go to the link www.dr.oscargudabadia.com. Programs like this are rare. I know there are many people that equip, but this man, the grace that is on his life, you cannot take it for granted. Even today, the answers that I gave was not because of me, but it's because I submitted to a man for years and got underneath that. I didn't sound like that. He birthed me into a sound. He created identity in me that I did not know. Showed me that I was more than a mouth. That's what you are. You are more than a mouthpiece. This program brings you into identity. It brings you into the grace of God that he has given you. Not just for you, but even for others. Breakthrough, miracle signs and wonders are evident through this program. I can't give it all. But join and be a testimony. Join and experience it. Thank you. All right, we're ending now. But before we leave today, I've been blessed. If you traveled from another nation to the UK, let me see your hands. If you traveled from another state to London, let me see your hand. If you live in London, let me see your hands. We want to thank those of you online as well. Thank you so much for being part of convocation. This usually happens in January, so there will be convocation. 2024. Are you excited already? Yeah. That one will be bananas as well. Amen. But see, I believe in the destiny of this nation. Caleb, the Lord says, wait, it's on you. I, I don't want to do this today. I didn't come for a word of knowledge. Uh. Wait, it's on you. I don't know, but I didn't want to do this, but the Lord says, wait is on you. I don't know what you've been waiting for, uh -huh. but wait is in the wait. Well, it's going to be a new level of flow. I hear aggressive intercession. I'm not laying hands on you as the Father. I'm laying hands on you as God's oracle. Calling out those things in your inside to come forth. The cry of a little one shall be the sign that you're going to walk heavy. Ibadoso. Velokos Kobrader. Mindrekiza. 
Balianon to Sofra, Habalush Kapada, Velente Sufrada Itako, Prado, Mandia, and the weight of the Lord that is on you, the cargo of the blood. I decree and prophesy that you will walk and not stand with his faith. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to sing one song that I'm going to call Baby. We'll be out of this place. We've overstayed our welcome. But we're going to sing one song, and after that I will call Debbie, and then I will say thank you to everybody that has come. Can we, can we sing the song now? Okay. There is only one earth. You're ending with this one. Okay. There is only one earth with power to serve. Let's sing along. Power to serve. This is a lost instruction, by the way. So there is something in this song. There is only one name. There is only one name. To the power to say.
exalted, exalted in number 10 in the government in every school. You will be, 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 this kingdom. phase of a miracle. I see the Lord clearing a path for you. It, it will not be long and uh, I, I, I hear those private conversations, those nighttime conversations that seem like but God when. You've actually asked God but God when. In the last season, in the last couple of days uh, and you, you've asked for Lord just make 2023, just make me smile. Give me a sign in the word. Give me a sign today. It's the world. But I hear the Lord say, it's just like Moses stretched forth the road and split the sea. There's going to be a splitting happening in your life in the days to come. There will be a phone call that will come through your phone. It seems like ends in an 862. Hear the word. It ends in an 862. A phone call that will come through to your phone now. And that call is about to change the trajectory of your life. In the days to come, you will see God move mighty miracles. 863. And God is about to change your story. I hear the Lord said to tell you, there will be breath in your 
finances. There is breath coming upon your finances. And God says, you did not train for waste. You've asked the Lord, God, but why did I do this career? And why did I do that? In the days to come, watch God do a miracle. Ah, Emmanuel, your husband, the word of the Lord for you. Brother, you have wept. Brother, you have cried. And said, God, but why? I hear your conversation. You say, I am tired. But God, why? God says, Emmanuel, I hear your cry. And I hear your petition. The day has come and this is the day. God said, I remember even the times that you had nothing. But you gave me your everything in manner. Watch God move. I say in the next days, God is... God is about to change her. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, and I don't want to come into your private space uh, and come into your home. Uh, but God is fortifying your marriage again. Are you getting? God is saying that there will not be split uh, and the confusion that the enemy tried to bring. Uh, God said it's time to fortify those things that made you upset easily. Because at the point in your life, you are tired. Uh, God says, watch me do a miracle. As for your marriage, uh, the Lord says to tell you, there will be like never before a fortification your home, Emmanuel. Your home is blessed. You ask the Lord God, I'm not done with you. You ask the Lord God, but God, I'm not done with you. And I know you want to talk to your husband. You ask the Lord God, God, but, but when? It looks like every prophetic word is spending in the heavens. And even as you saw the conference, you said to the Lord God, but God, what is going on with me? I hear heaven say to tell you, Emmanuel by name. God said to tell you, there will be even, there will be a confirmation, even in the days to come. And I see that young lady. Emmanuel, the Lord has not forgotten you. Emmanuel, there was a new page that has been opened for your name and your sake. The Lord said there were friends who had interceded with you. And it looked like God has abandoned and forgotten you. But the God said in the days to come, there will be a reopening of the scrolls again for your sake. God said, just as I remember Ezekiel, Ezekiah, God said, your time of remembrance has come. You say, Apostle, I've got a little bit nothing to show forth. But God said, if he is God, watch him do a miracle in the days to come. And your home, the Lord said, shall be called a place of peace. Hear me, woman of God. Hear me. There is a fresh breath that will come upon your hand. Let me say publicly for the Lord. You and your husband are about to make money. I need somebody to look at my face. Mother, get up. Talk to me. He needs to face me. I know he's crying, but he needs to face me. Because I want to tell him that I see him with the government of this land. And I see him say to you, to write the proposal. You said to the government of the land, you've got this for young people. You call it social justice. But God says, don't tell you, Emmanuel, you are about to be considered and you will be validated. The Lord said to tell you, son, you have written the proposal. You haven't completed because it doesn't make sense. God said, it is time to submit the proposal. That is fresh breath. I want to lay my hands on my friend. That is fresh breath coming upon you. God said to tell you, the gates are open for you. The nations are open for you. You will lack nothing. I prophesy. Gates and territories are open for yourself. You will walk with the government. The Lord says, young ones, Youth center, youth center, youth center, youth center, youth center, mentoring, mentoring, mentoring. You stop at some point because you felt like God had abandoned. God said to tell you, the scrolls has been open. Lord, I decree and I prophesy in the name of Jesus. In the days to come, we are going to get around to our Rupe Sabradi. So, Branda, Makishkata, 
He's turning morning to dancing. He's turning morning to dancing. He's turning morning to dancing. Deborah, where is she? Susan. He's turning morning to the word of the Lord for you. Uh, the Lord says, write the program. Get the guest that you want. People provide the resource that you need. I see something big happening in the few months to come. You have something in mind, but it looks like it might be a stretch in the finance. The Lord said, you will not spend your penny. I'm telling you what God said. I'm telling you what I think. You will not spend your penny on a project that you would have thought would cost you thousands. Because you're about to find grace in the sight of the Lord. Let me spy into your business. And let me write the book that I see. If you haven't written it, you're about to write it. Or the word will come to you. I see the book that has like a, a grayish kind of cover with a green scribe or something like that. And it's a book on emotional health, or emotional healing. You're about to write a book on how to recover how after maybe trauma or something. You're about to write a book or you write a book. And let me tell you what this book will become in the land. The book will become one of the most read book of the years himself. The book will become one of the most read book in this land. It has a like a creamy, creamy kind of a cover with a, a, a greenish kind of thing. You will write the book. The Lord says the Spirit of the Lord will breathe through you to write that book. The Lord say that you will write not just the book, you will write your testimony and how you overcame grief and trauma. And the Lord says there were men and women who will line up to buy and I see out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. God is about to blow your mind. The, the, the guests you're bringing from America, the Lord said that he will provide the resources that is needed in that time. I decree and prophesy that every Every five for you know, you know, my friend, Apostle Tony. I could call you and give you a word privately, I'll give you a word publicly. I should have said it at your church, but I'll say it here. The Lord will bring you strong. With your hands that you will trust so your hand doesn't drop to the ground. I'm going to prophesy so that you hear what I want to say. The Lord is bringing someone that will hold your hands and strengthen in this season because the one that you will be touching. times and season the Lord said. Don't let me break it because I've gone ahead of time to see the one very young so that maybe know. And it will crush you but the Lord says it's stronger persons come to hold your hands. You will come out of this place, you will walk and you almost levitate because God's presence will lift your legs. And the Lord will make you understand that your season and I know that you do a lot of things, but this season for you, the Lord says, is a season of liquid oil. I, I see you drip oil, liquid oil. And, and because you pressed and, and asked the Lord God for the next act, I, let me even expose your expose your, your prayer points. You said, God, is, the, is there more to this? Is this all? You said, is, is this all? There, there is more to this, this thing called supernatural. You are actually pressing God for more than you read, for more than you see. The Lord says you're about to touch a deep faith, a deep space in him and walk tall and walk heavy. Uh, but you have to be careful with those around you because those around you, when they don't understand it, they will demonize that dimension and they might be struck. But in the days to come, the Lord is about to lift you up in the spirit uh, and almost give you supernatural access to dimensions beyond your comprehension. You will hear things and you will know things. The God says the days will come upon you when those who surround themselves around you, they will even feel of the power that you walk in in the days to come. And I decree in the name of Jesus, uh, in the, uh, not you now. 
Let me give you a word for two minutes here. I've got two minutes. I'll give him two minutes. Count him. Two minutes. Reverend Adi, I love you, brother. I need a check. I've got two minutes. The Lord says, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I see you in the spirit. Jesus. The Lord says, sit down. The third point that is sit down. Let's sit down. 2023 for you, the Lord says, it's the time to sit down. Because there were men and women of God that have prayed and sought the face of the Lord for your life. The Lord says that you've entered a season of a sit down. Sit down means that God says rest. Your rest sir, has come. The Lord said the time of travail and the time of pain. And when you don't understand why you went through what you went through and you've asked questions about why me? God said that in the year, if I be God's prophet, the Lord says in the year 2023, the days of pain and the days of trauma and the days of questioning, the Lord said they were over. I hear God say to tell you, tell him to sit because this is a season of divine rest. The rest of God has come upon you, sir. And we decree and we prophesy before this congregation, there shall be rest in your house. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. In the name of Jesus, sir, your legs shall find rest. I prophesy, sir, your legs shall find rest. I prophesy, the next level is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus, rest is your inheritance. Rest is your next one. I decree that your name shall be called rest. Rest in God. Rest in his provision. Rest in him, I decree. You're about to hear a report that will make you scream from the top of your lungs. Because God will supersede your expectations. I speak as God's oracle. And today I decree that it is sealed, it is substant, it is signed. Let us just say yes. Thank you to the Lord of Lords. Thank you to the God Most High. Thank you to the God who was, who is, and who is to come. Thank you to the God who has been with us from morning even until now. Thank you for the transformation. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for the impartation. Let us begin to thank God. Let's just say a word of thank you. Let's say a word of thank you to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to take this moment just to say thank you to you all for coming tonight. It has been an awesome evening. If you believe it's been an awesome evening, just tell your neighbor it has been an awesome evening. It has been an awesome evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to Dr. Oscar. Thank you to Apostle Ryan. Thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you to all the volunteers who have been here since morning. Wow, God has been good to us. I just have a couple of announcements before we go. Now, um, Apostle has some books, and we don't want him to take his books home. So please, as you're leaving, if you take a book, I believe the price has come down, so please take one of the books um, with you. There is still food to purchase as well, so please, as you're going, please take some of the food with you. Um, we ask that, please, we need your help. We need your help. Tell your neighbor she needs your help. Please, please, and thank you. As you leave, please take your belongings and your rubbish with you and please let us leave quietly let us leave quietly so that our neighbors do not complain we have to be out of here very soon so please take your stuff with you and go we also have convocation gear remaining or flames gear i think it's finished so if you're interested in buying some of the merchandise you can get it online it's available online and you can order it and they will ship it to your address amen Amen. Praise the Lord. So, praise the Lord. So let us stand up and let us say, share the grace. So for the merchandise, I'm hearing that international shipping will be available soon. Amen. I want to thank all the apostles and prophets. In the house, I 
I honor you. I thank you for coming, Apostle Dabo, Apostle Phil, the apostles in the house, Pastor Ayo, apostles and prophets, Pastor Toby. I love you, brother. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We believe that the Lord Himself has moved today. Somebody say the UK is okay. Scream from your lungs, say the UK is okay. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rise and abide with you now and forevermore. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Say yes, Lord. by 10 o'clock so can we please make our way out we have to clear this hall and leave so can we please make our way out to make it possible for us to leave by 10 o'clock please please let's make our way out thank you very much god bless you have a safe journey home and if you're traveling back have a safe journey if you've come from another nation